Hey guys, welcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed those wonderful commercials. Uh, you know, obviously we're sponsored by ADI since we all are part of ADI. Um, and Jolly, uh, talk to me about life in the verse and what all yeah. did they cover today? A great coverage by the RSI team. Uh, the power, which is coming, I'm not sure when. My guess is 4.0. Just a guess, though. But that should work out pretty well. Uh, we still have routes uh, you need to, to take in order to go through a wormhole. Uh, but there will be multiple routes, they pointed out to us. Some may be for the, if you want to be a law-abiding, get in there, or a criminal getting in there. And other side notes, you'd be able to get in there whatsoever. Uh, the, the jump point has been confirmed to be near the area of Microtech. So in future patches, we you make your selection of where I do want to be, he may want to consider Microtech as opposed to more centrally located right now, um, Lorville. So we'll wait and see on that one. But for right now, just keep it in the back of your mind. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think that uh, we may want to move over to uh, Microtech in uh, 3.15 and start basing out of there so we get used to it. I know. Not 15. Maybe 16, 17. I'd agree with you. But maybe. I think a little bit before Microtech's going to be or Pyro is going to be available to us. So for right now. Minimum. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, no. No, as no, I was saying, is based off what we saw, at optimistically, Q3 next year, we might see Pyro probably after that. So, yeah. 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 Uh, but definitely in the next couple patches, we'll probably have to switch over to New Battle, yeah. which is the primary. Yeah, I agree. But for right now, I'm preferring uh, Lorville as opposed to Microtech. Uh, in the future, I agree. When Pyro is available, Micro may be a little bit better than the other ones. Um, Pyro stations range from uh, it was really they did a magnificent job, in my opinion, in explaining um, the pyro um, verse as opposed to the st Staten verse, Stratton verse. But uh, the gangs are in charge of the security over there, as opposed to it, currently what we have in Stanton is you're either you know Hurston or uh, Crusader security. Now you go over there. It's a matter of I'm part of a gang. Gang reputation comes into play. That's really interesting. I like that idea. I, it's a very big plus. I like the point that they can have now a, a them and us type of thing. If you're a pro pirate or anti pirate, which uh, system you want to be in, you can raid the other ones and stuff like that. That's a that's a big positive all overall. Uh, it's amazing how it worked, created great. The environments over there. It was really nice to see how they uh, went ahead and spent time explaining to us how. Um, they created these stations, how, what, what efforts they put into it. I also appreciate the fact that they spent some time talking about how they took what they knew about beforehand and they went ahead and just made adjustments by removing uh, paint schemes and stuff like that. Took the same um, environment and by adjusting their, uh, um, by adjusting their uh, uh, colors and stuff like that, they could change the whole thing around dramatically. It was a very a big plus. Uh, they have a Lesky look, and of course, Lesky is supposed to be uh, brought back to us in, uh, in a, a Pyro. However, I'm not sure it's really going to happen. Pyro, uh, Lesky is supposed to be back in the uh, next uh, NYX, but nevertheless, they may put it over there in Pyro for us in a little bit. There are supposed to be Pyro planets right now. Based upon the graphics I saw, they showed uh, five pyro planets. However, the lore and the arc shows six. Uh, I guess they decided to drop the sixth planet, and be it's true or not, did somebody say something different than that? I didn't see anything different than that, but uh, it should be six. And uh, that's according to the star five. map. Uh, oh, there's some things in the star map that are way out of date. Like that third planet is listed as a lava planet in the star map. And they've greatly changed that from what they showed. Correct. Yeah, that's true. The last time I saw the arc updated was 2015. And so it's been many years since then. So, well, they made some comment about the fact that that's flash based on the back end and that is gone uh, MIA and they can't really update it. So they said we should, they're going to be redoing that and we should see some updates on the star map. I believe now, that's what they said, right, Soulhawk? Yeah, they did say something about it being flash based on the back end. There are new style buildings. Uh, I thought they're kind of like Star Wars or Moss. Uh, it's Isley uh, vibe to them, to all of them. They emphasize here is a desire to put outposts. 
the hands of players, which is the big plus, in my opinion. Independent farmer, minor farmers or miners, unique maybe uh, a use for all of that junk that we have. Uh, homesteads, I thought that was a big positive. Gameplay wise, outpost uh, shops, no kiosks I noticed. Uh, with instead interface with NPCs, uh, addition of artifacts as opposed to commodities came into play. Uh, AI operates off of a day system, a day pattern system, meaning if it's early in the morning, most likely to be asleep. Later on, most likely to be, uh, be awake. We need to decide we'll go ahead and raid one of these outposts. You want to take that into consideration as to where you're going to go and not go. Yeah, that's all right. I like that uh, uh, addition to the game itself. Um, uh, there's run and gun and stealth. Uh, what you put in there, Gnome, can you explain it a little bit further? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, the run and gun. Well, basically, gun, just talking yeah. about going in, uh, just guns blazing, or doing what that guy did was was go up to the shopkeeper and just start killing everybody, taking what he needs, and go. And then they showed a stealth run where you could go through and uh, slowly take people out without being seen and without alerting the whole base. I was like that you could get the same outcome as far as getting the item, but there's multiple paths to do it. Yes. Yeah, I Definitely. agree. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, final thing, it's side note, truly a side note, but a Thirds of War seems to be missing. We have not heard from that since 2018? 18, uh, 18, 18, I think it was, <clears throat> and nothing on that. I'm not sure I mind that or not. I really believe that de devs should spend their time in the game itself or Squadron 42, but maybe not uh, T.O.W. Yeah, so be it. So no. Uh, what was the question? Uh, T.O.W. Oh, theater, theater of war. war. Yeah, I um, heard nothing. Absolutely nothing on that in the yeah. whole presentation, well, which honestly uh, doesn't bother me. I never was invested in that. Yeah, I'm, we'll start with theaters of war here as we kind of round robin this and. I'm excited because I thought Theaters of War was complete bullcrap and sucked and they were wasting complete time on it. So the fact that they don't seem to be wasting time on it uh, to me is a positive. I thought it was a, a complete waste of time and money and effort to spend one second on it. So uh, if they've killed it off like they did Star Marine, which was awful, also awful, um, I think that was a good thing. Andrew, what are your... Much. What yeah, I was going to say, I think, I think it was pretty much um, them trying to upscale Star Marine. Like, I think that was like their next real big push, whether they've said it or not. Um, I think that that's what it is. Where, wherever it is, um, a lot of people, you know, rushed Star Marine once it released and then it, it fell off quite a while. And I think that Theaters of War was just their iteration of trying to bring it back. But it, for me, it's neither here nor there. You know, if, if they implement it, cool. I'll check it out and try it. And, and, uh, well, you know, it's it's more along the lines of once Squadron Forty Two comes out, uh, that's where I'll be, and of course, once the verse hits, um, that's where I'll be. So, yeah, I think but it's I, just to tide us over right now. Well, my thought is is they haven't said to hide their hair about it in two years. Hopefully, right. they've just given up on it. So, um, Soul, what are your thoughts? I mean, Theater Wars would be interesting if they actually finished it. With that being said, as far as viability and it worth being invested in that there's not much incentive to work on it from a gameplay standpoint would it be fun sure is it useful no okay and josh your thoughts on theaters no update on theaters war i'm gonna have to be careful about any comments because <laughs> um one, I, I, I do agree that I don't want to see side projects. I want to see the game. I will agree with that 100%. Um, you know, being involved with Evocati and testing, there's some things that occurred that I can't talk about. But uh, I'm glad they didn't highlight it. I do not care if it goes away. I do care more about things we're going to get into later, like server meshing. Well, we'll get to that in just a second. What are your thoughts on the pyro planets that they showed us, Josh? Um. So I woke up this morning and I believe, was that where they showed the three different iterations where you could go through the same area with three different, like a faction member or non-faction member, right? Yes. Uh, so Yes, that, that was Pyro. Yeah, so I really enjoyed that and the concept that 
depending on where you are and where you stand with that faction in that area that you could have different, you know, interactions or different ways you uh, conduct your business. So I really like that a lot. And that's more variation I want to see as gameplay comes out more. Yeah, I agree completely. Joni's trying to pull up a uh, picture of Pyro here for us. Yeah. So this is one of the Pyros. Uh, well, that's so one Hawk biome. One, one biome, biome and one of the... Yes, I agree. There were. There's a total of... And Joni keeps pulling up the wrong stuff. Go back to the other. <laughs> um, You're good. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Well, she I did think it was hilarious that they barely talked about the 400i and they talked more about Pyro as it was flying around. Well, they, they talked about the 400i at length than one of the other ones. That's where they made okay. up for it. Okay. So, um, Soulhawk, what are your thoughts about what they showed us of the different pyro planets and all the different biomes on each of the planets? I really like the the look of pyro and the art style. The planets themselves seem to be pretty interesting. I'm not sure how much more actually variety we're getting because they seem to really emphasize what was that pyro three with the moss and everything. Yeah. They yep. spent a lot of time there, not a lot of time on the rest of stuff beyond some art direction. One thing that really did concern me when they're looking at the station and the habitation area, they mentioned how they didn't want it so crowded where the player and NPC kind of pathfinding got horrible looking. And as you're looking at the frame they're showing you, there's like enough room for one person to pass between stalls. So the fact that they were bringing it up and showing an example showing like, hey, we didn't solve the problem. It exists right here and you can see it was kind of concerning. It's like they weren't really paying attention to what they were showing. Well, I agree completely. And, uh, Androsa, what did you think of the pyro stuff they showed us? Oh, no, that was Androsa right there. I saw it on the screen, Jay. You can't fool me. He already <laughs> said his bit. Um, no, no, Joni's got the <laughs> stuff all messed stuff. <laughs> no, the, uh, it's been a long day for Joni. We got to cut It has been a long day been, for she's our been producer. Doing a great job yes. today. Um, but, um, no, I, I really, really loved it. Um, the aesthetics were clean. They were very nice. Um, you know, we were, we were down there chatting. A couple of us kind of broke off into small groups and we were kind of chatting about, um, you know, pyro and, and Jolly kind of hit the nail on the head with a lot of it looking like, you know, Los Angeles or most Angeles with the, um, um, uh, the little smaller areas around and it really all came together. I mean, you really could get a feel, um, and it really, it really came alive. And that was one of the big things that I touched on this morning was bringing that life, bringing that realism in. And they really did with, um, you know, the, you know, phosphorescent, you know, yellow, yellowish color around there from the volcanic, you know, how, how they were kind of describing it and everything. Um, but I loved it. I think they did a great job on it. I can't, I can't wait to see it. Well, I agree completely. I think that uh, they did a wonderful job. Nam, what are your thoughts on the pyro and all the stuff they showed us about pyro? Uh, first off, I really liked how the uh, they showed there was different ways to go in there. Um, well, no, I'm talking about the planets. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, the plants themselves. As far as, yes. yeah. Um, well, it's looks like that we know they've been working on those plants for a long time. Looked like they had it, that, that environment very, fairly fleshed out. Um, the, uh, I'm, I'm, so far, we've only seen the five be mentioned. And uh, we're going to have to go back through that video to see if I get what little more information they were showing on them. And they were going through each one, but didn't really have time to pause and read it. Um, yeah, there was a lot of information in those slides. They didn't that. talk, even though they, they talked about it generally, they didn't really show general positioning or anything to give it to go on the uh, how spread out the pyro system is and why we're going to need things about that one ship we're going to have to talk about later. Yep. Um, I completely agree. Um, Jolly, your thoughts on the pyro landscapes of the different planets that they showed us? They're beautiful. I like them. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that they've got five there that we know about. Like I said, there's supposed to be six, but yeah, so be it. Five's good enough for me. A uh, good variety of, of planets themselves. Some breathable air, some not. Some very extreme uh, uh, atmospheres. Some they're going more for the uh, whatever you want, you get. You can get moss, you can get a uh, uh, lush green, you get snow, whatever the case may be. So it's a good variety, kind of like an earth type plant. So that's a plus. I agree completely. Um, I really liked that uh, portion of it and I thought it looked great. Um, and 
you know, just to talk about the gameplay for a second. Um, you know, the gameplay is, uh, I was really impressed with the gameplay walkthrough they put us through, uh, you know, the different ways of going in. I was sitting there thinking about how fun that's going to be for our org to drop in 40 or 50 guys to do an assault on a, a you know, a, a city or, you know, small outpost, outpost. this size. Yep. Yes. And I agree. It had a very most icely feel to it. Um, but, uh. I don't know. Uh, Jolly, what do you think from looking at those gameplay scenarios they gave us that we as an org, um, some of the things that's going to allow us to do that we don't can't do today? I would love it at the idea of Bella taking down an outpost, um, the large organization, putting a lot of people in the game, go down there, you attack, remove the, by the way, remove the uh, fi- missile launchers immediately. Yes, definitely. And get down there with an overwhelm with firepower or take over the uh, outpost itself take what's there i'm interested to learn more about the artifacts they didn't explain that too much as for what their value or worth is maybe i got a feeling you put three of those things together they mean something eh, we'll wait and see but just the joy of doing the attack itself would be worthwhile I get I the think, impression that the artifacts were more um just an in-game collectible that was worth a lot of value. I didn't get the impression that it had any game mechanics. I don't know. Maybe it'll no. give you like a map to somewhere. You know, you collect <laughs> a couple. I'm with Jolly on this one. You put three of them together, it gives you coordinates to some lost treasure on the middle of nowhere. <laughs> they did refer to it as a MacGuffin. I think it's just going to be a hangar yeah. decoration. Yep. As Joni continues to mislabel Androsa. Trying to fix stuff. <laughs> Joe's just taking it over. I think I'm yeah. all over the screen yeah. now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it says so hawk. Okay. Oh, um, you're the imposter. Josh, you were about to say, what did you think about doing assaults? Uh, you know, since that's kind of your bailiwick, figuring out how we're going to do stuff like that. What do you see those missions looking like? Well, you know, I've been doing a lot of DCS lately and a lot of complicated missions with lots of guys and thinking about going in and having guys hit the turrets first, whether that's with aircraft or with guys on the ground and getting kind of phase one and step one done. And then having your phase two come in with ground troops or whether we're going to bring vehicles and the pre-planning and the execution that goes with that. That's where I really, really enjoy a game is playing my role in some complex movement where we all have lots of pieces in motion and getting them to work together so that we can accomplish more than we can on our own, right? The benefit of being in an org is that you can do more than you could on your own. Hurting those cats and getting in there and the unexpected things and the chaos, I I love those things. So I'm really looking forward to it and uh, I wish it was out right now. I I agree completely. Uh, Solhawk, you know, you're our director of operations. Um, and uh, do mission planning for the org. Uh, Tracker asks a real interesting question here. It, and to quote him, it looked like the missiles didn't fire until a certain altitude. So low flying might work to get in close to take them out. If you can lock and get a pip, that is, or drop a bomb. What do you think about, can you expound on his thoughts there? And what do you think about that? It, it might have been altitude. It might also have been distance because he was actively moving away from that outpost, and it's it's really hard to tell with just the one example. Uh, I do think that low-flying fast aircraft might be able to take it out. Ground assault is also very valid, as it's probably strictly anti-air missiles. Uh, it depends on what you have available as to which way you want to go, and it does depend if those missiles are altitude-based or just distance-based. Well, and when you look at real-world radars today, and anti-aircraft um, batteries, those missiles and radar types are designed for different um, distances, different elevations. Some are for really, really close. Some are to get you far away. Some come at you so fast, they're going to be really hard to avoid. Some shoot so close and so quickly that a quick maneuver can get away. So I don't know if they're, I'm going to hope that they're implementing something like that where you have different styles, but there could be reasons that we don't know yet. I agree completely. Uh, 